I think everybody was doing the same schlock. We were doing loops, uh, and we were doing uh, little two-day wonders with film, 16 millimeter film. Loops were about 12 minutes long, I think, and you'd shoot probably a half hour. And you got paid very little, $40 a loop, but you could do three loops a day. <laughs> but they were sexy because they were dirty. It was, you felt naughty. You know, these normal girls, college girls would come in and they'd be willing to take their clothing off and they'd go down on you without the slightest thought. And you think, these are not normal girls. They, they'll just do anything. <laughs> they, they'll just, you know. $40 was really a lot of money. I said, I'm getting $40. I said, this doesn't make sense. I'm getting $40 to have sex with this girl? No problem. You know, Jay had this rule. He says, you know, uh, do not wear a bra or, you know, tight jeans before you come to the set. You know, I can't wait one hour for the marks to go away. You know, Jay had a, he had a stopwatch. He literally had a stopwatch. Because he, he could not shoot more than 12 minutes. And I said, so... What do I do? He goes, well, you know, start, you know, first start kissing, you know, then French kissing, then you go down her pussy, then she sucks your cock, and then you fuck her in three positions. You know, that's how it was. And then, uh, and, you know, I remember, I remember he was going to cut the camera, but I just kept coming. I mean, I came like 10, I think 10 spurts. And then I remember, I'll never forget, because I, I thought I stopped, and she thought I stopped, and I go, I have more cum. You know, but, you know, one thing he said, if you're going to speak, you know, to the, to the female and the male talent, you don't let me see your mouth because it was silent loops. Because, because then, because then, I, then you're going to really ruin everything because then I have to put your voice in and it cost me money. I don't have it in my budget. So then I remember, you know, the camera was over here, you know, because the cum shot. And then I remember going, I'm not done coming. And then, so I came some more on her tits, you know. You know, because the first was in her, on her face. Uh, I remember showing up at this Upper West Side Manhattan apartment. And I got there. I was very nervous. I didn't know what to expect. It was a, a large crew. I mean, it was all film then. And there were about six guys. And apparently, each guy that was supposed to go in this scene failed. So, like, you know, I'm getting nervous. I go into the bathroom to, like, you know, to, you know, because I'm perspiring. I go in the bathroom. I pull out my penis. And I look at it. And it's, like, this big. And I, and I, you know, and I don't know to play with myself. I, you know, I didn't have any concept of what to do, and I just said it. So I got out, and they said, all right, kid, you're up, you know. So, so I go to this thing. This is blonde woman. I don't remember her name. She, you, you know, she was sitting at a table eating breakfast. I'm supposed to come over, and a sex scene ensues. So, uh, so I go over to her, and, uh, and he says, okay, pick up the banana, and like, you know, so, so I, you know, I do it and she starts, you know, tonguing the banana and the whole nine yards and everything. And then, you know, I'm like really nervous. She pulls down my fly. As soon as she pulls down my fly, my dick gets hard. I couldn't, you know, and everybody starts laughing. I'm humiliated. I'm, I'm humiliated. They're fucking laughing at me. I didn't realize it was that it was, they were so happy. So, I mean, that's, you know, that was my level of excitement at that point. You know, I, I, I was not somebody that needed a fluffer by any stretch, you know. <laughs>
I think the only time that, that I can recall was a girl that I really couldn't stand working with. Hated her. It was a job. It really was a job. And then I took the opportunity to say, excuse me, okay, they're changing something, whether well, I'll go to my fluffer and come back to you, because there was nothing about her I liked at all. Zip. <laughs> It was a beginning industry, and a lot of the beginning actors really couldn't hold back anyway. So we just accepted it as it is. Okay, and could you give me one more? <laughs> no, I'm done for the day. That, that's it, man. Um, I think the control uh, came with the territory and came with time. You know, even back in those days, there was always a demand for people who performed males especially to, to be on the spot. I mean, get it hard, you know, and come on cue, you know, to the most, for the most part. But, uh, you know, minus the, uh, the addition of Viagra back then, there was a select group of guys that could, you could always call on and be sure that they could do it and then deliver a performance as well. So, but it was a little more sketchy. I mean, there were certainly a lot more failures back then. I mean, now you get a guy who's marginal, takes Viagra, who could become a, you know, a working pro, you know. A real hard dick is a very dangerous thing to have because I'll tell you, when you're fucking, the body is a natural machine. And if you get a really hard dick for any great length of time, it isn't really good for your dick for a number of reasons. When I was in Texas in 73, I didn't know any better, so I fucked as hard and long as I could. And in fact, I fucked off camera too. And when I came back, I woke up and I was pissing fire. I said, what the fuck are these flakes pouring out of my dick? So I went to a doctor named Parrot in Santa Monica. So he said, what were you doing with that dick? Digging a ditch? And I said, well, no, I was doing hardcore. And he said, what's that? Because it's a 73. I said, well, I stayed hard for a couple of hours at a time. He said, you're out of your fucking mind. Do you have any idea what damage you were doing inside your dick? And I said, what are you talking about? He said, you have a urethra. Your urethra lubricates. After a while, there's nothing left to, your, to lubricate with, and you've, what you've done is you've worn out your brake lining. That's exactly how he put it. So now, think about what's happening in today's market. Because these kids are worried about their erections. They're taking Viagra, and then, of course, you take Viagra. Rumor is you can't get off when you're supposed to because you don't know what the hell you're doing anyway. So you're making your dick unnaturally hard, which means it's causing the urethral lining to be lubricating as long as it can, but then it's going to start to shred in there. The normal sex scene, the normal sexual interlude between people who are just having fun doing it, penetration, orgasm, 15, 20 minutes. You start fucking for hours at a time. First of all, the vagina can only be battered for so long, and then you have all kinds of problems. Serena will tell you that. She had battered womb syndrome from being pounded through one of, in one of Tobolina's moronic films. They, every, everybody wandered in there and beat the hell out of her, but Serena, being slightly masochistic, probably enjoyed it anyway. Viper wanted to see how hard people could fuck her, but she wanted three. She did double anal, double vaginal, double fisting. She wanted three dicks in her ass. But they couldn't find three dicks to do it because guys are stupidly homophobic and think if their dick touches another dick, they're automatically gay. Ah! You know, women that aren't in the industry, they can't understand how I can have sex with a woman and not be emotionally attached. They can't, they can't see that. They can't understand that. They can't digest it emotionally. They just don't believe it. They don't believe it. They, they, they think it's a myth. And I'm sure that every other porn actor on the planet can attest to this, that, you know, you tell your, your, the special woman in your life, you know, I'm just fucking. It's just sex. There's no, I don't love the woman. You know, uh, I love you. you know, you're special. But they, they, they just can't see it. Now, on the other hand, women in the business, they're, they're the only ones that you really can have a relationship with. Men are stupid, let's face it. We think we can compartmentalize. Like, oh, this is my wife, this is where the real love exists. Now, over here, I have the, 
the, the mistress and the sex and the wild, this and that, and you think you can keep it separate. But we humans are muddier than that. And there are at least four or five women that I met over the course of my career that I fell in love with. I crossed the line a number of times. And Kelly Nichols is one of those women that I could have ridden off into the sunset with and had a, a life like that. Um, Annette Haven was another. Um, Kay Parker might have been another. Nina Hartley was another. These were privileges to me that I got to have this kind of intimacy in life without sacrificing my marriage and stuff. Um, I can't imagine another profession where one could do that. Well, with me personally, um, I wouldn't have sex with somebody the day before I had a shoot to do. I want to keep a little edge. Either I would decline it, or every once in a while, as a favor, I would fuck the woman and let her have a good time, but I wouldn't come, which made it even more frustrating. I did like to take care of the woman I was dating, and, you know, it depended on what kind of shoot it was. Uh, if I thought I was going to be really turned on by who I was working with in the setup, then, uh, then maybe I could fuck them the night before and and uh, hold back and not come until the next day. But if I thought, well, you know, I can do this scene. I can't, I can't say I'm crazy about doing it. I'm doing it more for a job than f fun. Because I, I did porn for fun more than money. I would say the hardest part of being in porn is that I would not have sex the night before a shoot. That was like a hardship for me. Uh, sometimes I did. In the very early days, I remember even once going from an all-night orgy with no sleep to a set. But that was okay in the very beginning, but after a while you wanted to, you know, be a little more professional. <laughs> um, so, but in terms of relationships, sure, uh, if I was with women who um, uh, were not involved in the business, it was a little more difficult. They didn't understand at all, you know, I'm hanging out with this porn guy, you know. Uh, and, and if they were in the business, it was, of course, easier than they understood. They were working the next day themselves, you know, like Serena or, or whoever I was, might, might have been living with. <laughs> <laughs>